Meanwhile, tensions continue to run high over the migrant crisis right here in New York City. On Friday, protesters upset all over the arrival of asylum-seeking migrants in the city's mandate to provide for them heckled a delegation of Democratic lawmakers. Now, they were touring the Roosevelt Hotel in Midtown, which is serving as a relief center for migrants. Meanwhile, new data reveals that the city took in more migrants than anywhere else in the country since last spring, and the cost continues to escalate, with many lawmakers saying the massive bill will soon put the city in a dire crisis. Joining us this morning, State Assemblyman Sam Perizzolo. He's from Staten Island. Assemblyman, nice to have you Good here. Good morning, Representative Bianca. Thank you for having me. Uh, so you're, you're based on Staten Island. What are you hearing? What's going on over there? Because all we hear about are protests going on, and some of them are very contentious. Well, you know, the situation is really out of control with the number of migrants that are coming in. You just alluded to the cost of this. Um, we're paying more for the migrants that we're housing in New York than any other major city in the country. Uh, they're, spending they're spending hundreds of millions of dollars and we're spending billions of dollars. Um, as far as the protests on Staten Island, I think that it's really a misunderstood situation. If you look at our neighborhoods on Staten Island, Travis, for example, a very nice community, was told that they would be temporarily housing migrants. We just found out last week that temporary is going to be till 2026. Wow, this is not temporary. Uh, you're talking about St. John's Villa. This is in the resident. This is in a residential community where they're bringing in outdoor showers. The toilets are overflowing. There's a smell. There's a stench. Um, there's a power generator that's running to give them power. So it's not that people on Staten Island are anti-immigrant. If you take my own family history, for example, my grandparents came to America in the 30s, and they did it the legal way. And not only that, they applied for citizenship for my mother when she came over as a child, and even my father, when they arrived here, they came as citizens. That's really what we're saying. You know, well, the governor's talking about expediting work per permits for everybody, as if that's going to solve the problem here. Yeah. Uh, have you been called to... Uh, Albany to uh, expedite work permits? Well, thank you. I would love to go to Albany. I I'm, I'm certainly would not be in favor of expediting work permits. Why not? Uh, well, because that's really a false premise. All you're really going to be doing is fueling an under-the-table um, job program where people are going to be working for cash off the books. They're not going to be paying taxes on their salary, and they're going to be spending their money buying the same thing that they would be buying anyway. So I think that's really a false premise. Not only that, we have so many other citizens and legal migrants who could use help that to just pour this money into, uh, you know, I guess we can, people will argue over the term illegal immigration, but that's really what it is. People are jumping the line. Let's talk about the right to shelter, which is in effect here for New York City, one of if you, if only states that, or cities that does this, the governor does want this to apply, uh, or this mayor wants this to apply to these cities and counties upstate. The governor is saying no. Are those counties xenophobic because they don't want to? Um, I guess, introduce this right to shelter to its residents? So I don't think those counties are any more xenophobic than the 58% of New Yorkers, as you just saw, who are protesting against the way the governor and the, and the um, mayor are handling this migrant crisis. Mm -hmm. It's not that they're afraid of migrants or they don't like migrants. It's an untold, you know, the mayor says this has no end in sight. What does that mean? Hmm. You know, you're already four, yeah. 12 billion out over three years. So it's, it's not xenophobia, it's common sense. Well, the end in sight could possibly happen. I know the right to shelter is being taken up in court today. However, let's talk about the right to shelter and your understanding of it because, you know, this was not voted in by, uh, by people of the city. Correct. This is a, a case. It's a consent decree. So wh why is this still in part and we're in like we're making this happen right now when this is coming from a phrase in the state constitution back in the Great Depression. So it really started in 1979 with the Koch administration where we had homeless men in the Bowery suffering from uh, substance abuse, namely alcoholism, um, where they did a right to shelter to take care of those gentlemen. Now, somewhere about 1981 it was including uh, when to include women and somewhere after that to do families. Um, if the mayor stopped paying for this that would get the case into court because the Coalition for the Homeless through the Legal Aid Society would sue and then we can have a clarification, a definition of what right to shelter means and who does it mean we should be sheltering. The mayor hasn't the done that price, who's, who's paying for, for those lawsuits? Because the, the Coalition for the Homeless, Legal Aid Society, it's heavily taxpayer dollars. Well, That's you just that. answered your own question. Mm. So New Yorkers are paying for them to yeah. sue. So, you know, meanwhile the President's in town. He's going to be here uh, doing the UN General Assembly and also fundraising, uh, but no talk 
from many of our leaders about bringing the president to the migrant shelters to let that let him see firsthand what's going on. So let me offer some clarity there. I offer for President Biden today to contact me, my office, or any elected official on Staten Island and come to Staten Island, see the havoc that your policies have caused. Okay, uh, this is not right what you're doing to the migrants for sure, and it's certainly not right what you're doing to the people. We're talking about, even the mayor says, you know, we want to be the city of yes. Uh, it's not the city of yes when you talk about the disrespect to the, the communities and the people of Staten Island, even the elected officials. So, you know, while you're here, let's talk about parking meters going up because, let's face it, we got to pay for everything, right? New York City is a highly taxed city, and now when you want to park in New York City, wait till you see these meters going up. What, what have you heard about this? So I received notification, actually, that um, in the city below 96th Street and then the core central midtown, parking is going to go up to $5, $5.50 for the first hour, up to $9 and you know, maybe eight fifty, seven fifty for the second hour. I don't remember the numbers exactly. Um, and this is all under the premise of turning over parking spaces and preventing double parking, which will do nothing but increase, because who wants to park at a meter for $5 an hour? I know. Uh, well, we do have a statement from the DOT, Vincent Barone. By aligning meter rates with demand, we're going to make it easier for drivers to find a spot because there will be more availability. These new rates will also reduce congestion and double parking while supporting the local economy. What do you say to that? Uh, I, ca I can only laugh. And that will be as unsuccessful and popular as congestion pricing. What do you think is going to happen? You think people are not going to pay for it and then they're going to have to go after them because... So this really, you know, we were talking about with the migrant crisis, this doesn't really pay for the migrant crisis because this is really the effect of what you have of a socialist government in the city council. So these are people who want to redistribute the wealth and if you look at the breakdown of the parking increases, it's the more affluent areas that are paying more. So that's really what happened is they're just trying to redistribute the wealth. All right, well, good luck. Let us know if uh, the governor decides to call you guys back a little earlier to uh -huh. Albany to, to deal with this, right? Well, because she is she bluffing? <laughs> what, about calling us back? Yeah. yeah. I don't think she's going to call us back. Calling us back, I think, would be very harmful to the uh, Democrat Party because they're going to have to take ownership of this just like they have bail reform. Or also let us know if the president wants to stop by and contact you about going to one of the microphones. I'll call shelters. you first. All right, <laughs> glad to know. Sam Perizzolo, State Assemblyman from Staten Island. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you.